These are the, the descendants of bees from South Africa that were brought to Brazil in the 1950s. And what they were trying to do is they were actually trying to create a better bee for the tropics. The European honeybee, which is the one that most people use throughout the world, uh, originated in uh, southern Europe, especially in Greece, Italy, um, southern France. Uh, there were even, I mean, we were even using the subspecies from northern Europe and England as well. But these bees had been selected for by people for almost 3,000 years. So beekeepers have been selecting European honeybees for good honey production, for not swarming, for not absconding, and for gentleness. And, you know, they, they were a good domestic animal. And like most domestic animals, uh, they usually need some help along the way. The African, the, uh, the South African honeybee was not subjected to the selection pressure. It was receiving its selection pressure from natural predators like honey badgers uh, and also from the, the native peoples who were harvesting the, the honey directly from bee trees. They weren't weren't heavily managing the bees. And these came from a subtropical environment. So the hope was that this would create a better honeybee for the American tropics. And they uh, did some hybridization experiments uh, in Brazil. In 1957, some of the uh, queens escaped and became established in Brazil. Uh, in just a matter of a few years, they spread over most of South America and started working their way northward through Central America, reaching the United States in 1990 uh, when they showed up in Texas. Uh, they gradually, over the next five years or so, spread throughout the southwestern United States into Southern California. And we sort of expected them to show up in the southeast as well, but they didn't. Um, not until about 2005 did we really start to see them out in the environment. We were intercepting them at ports prior to that, but we weren't finding them away from ports until about 2005.